Do the Gully Kit Hall Effect Sensor joysticks actually prevent Joy-Con drift? According to Gully Kit and every article I've read on the subject, yes. In my non-engineer brain's opinion, who will really know until we're able to live with and use these controllers for 5, 10, 20 years? I know the Dreamcast had hall sensing joysticks, but the design is uh, slightly different. And if we're being honest, the sample size of the Dreamcast isn't that large. So in my eyes, only time will really tell, and I hope it tells us that this is the way. There are also potential downsides that we may not know about yet, like accuracy drops and demagnetization. Imagine going around a Smash tournament with one of these bad boys. So I really think we're just gonna have to wait and see if these sticks are better, worse, or the same. These were sent to me by a third-party Amazon seller with a ton of other goodies. So shout out to Acnes. I didn't really make an agreement with them. They just sent it to me. So for a members only video, I took a look at what they sent me and gave my honest feedback. You can hit that join button down below if you want to see that. But when it comes to these joysticks, I don't really care for them. They're kind of slippery and I really don't want to use any stick grips, even though they did include these ugly ones. And for some reason, the stick tops are removable, but they don't sell any replacements. So I'm not really sure what the point is. There are no other stick tops that I know of that'll work with these. But if you still want to learn how to install these, let's just jump into it. If you don't know your right from your left, right Joy-Con, left Joy-Con. We're gonna do these at the same time. They are slightly different, but it's pretty much the same process. There are four tri-wing screws on each of these, and I believe these are a triple zero tri-wing. So starting with the left Joy-Con, you're gonna to wanna to get your fingernail or some sort of pry tool underneath the edge. Get all those clips around the edges. And once it's nice and loose, you're gonna to wanna to open it up like a book because you want to be careful of these two ribbon cables here. And same thing for the right Joy-Con, lift up those edges and then open it up like a book. But that one's more like a manga because it's backwards. Now, what I recommend doing is since we're going to be poking around with a metal screwdriver is unplugging the battery. You don't want to short anything and ruin your Joy-Con. Let's see how bad these tweezers are because they look awful. This right here is the battery connector. You really shouldn't grab it by the wires, but as long as you pull up and back, you should be fine. And it's the same thing on the other Joy-Con. And just make sure those wires are out of there. At this point, if you want to disconnect this half, you can with these two connectors. This one's underneath the battery, so you'd have to wait for it anyways. Those ribbon cables are finicky and hard to get back in. They tear pretty easily too, so I'm just going to leave them alone and be careful. Just try not to knock this or pull it apart. <laughs> but let's continue by getting the battery out. If you want to with your fingers or if you need a plastic pry tool to get in there, don't use any metal pry tools to get out of battery. That'll happen. Something plastic and not pokey, but it should come out pretty easily. There's a little bit of double-sided tape, but it's really not that bad. There looks like there's a little inlet over here that we can just get our plastic pry tool through there. And we should be able to pull the rest up with our finger. Yeah, there's one on this one too. So we've got one Phillips screw here, and it doesn't look like it, but the two other gold screws are holding this piece of plastic down. Now we should be able to carefully lift this up it is attached by the trigger, so do not rip it out. And again, these ribbon cables are really finicky. I don't want to have to put this back in, so I'm just going to carefully leave it out and set that down. We also have a gold screw down here, then two up by the trigger. And there is a tiny difference with the right Joy-Con. You have to lift this antenna out. It's just one little wire and one little PCB. Then you can carefully lift this one up as well. But be extremely careful with this one because it is a lot tighter. This ribbon cable is not very long. This one I might recommend unplugging, but I'm still not going to do it. Now this one we definitely have to unplug. There's a little gray tab right here. You just lift it up and you can carefully pull it out with some tweezers. And the reason we have to take this one out is because one of the two screws for the stick is covered by it. So now we can unscrew these two screws. And before you go yanking it out, we have to unplug this ribbon cable too. Lifting up that black latch, then we can take the stick out. You might get caught on this little dust cover. That's all right. But if you correctly unlatched it, the ribbon cable for the stick should come right out. The two screws on this one are uncovered, so we can just take them out. And again, flip that black piece up and then just try and wiggle that stick out of there. All right, take a deep breath. You did it, we're halfway there. Well, once we install the sticks, let's get those out. Since I still have the orange one out, we'll start with the right side. I'm gonna lift the entire assembly up a little bit since the stick will protrude and just put it back in the way you found it. Might have to wiggle through again. And then you can put those same two golden screws in those same two holes. And then as long as your latch is still up, we can plug the new ribbon cable in. It's a little stiff, so you might struggle with it. That's all right. And lock that tab down. If you did it just like me, you're going to have to flip it around 360. Make sure you're not pinching the antenna wire there. And it's going to rest just like this. 
Now, as long as you didn't rip any ribbon cables, you can go ahead and put those three screws back in, and then we can slot that antenna back in there. I'm gonna start this time with plugging in the ribbon cable first. That seemed a lot easier and lock that tab down. But before you fully seat these down, make sure this ribbon cable is not in the way of any screw holes. Then we can go ahead and line up those screw holes again. And we can go ahead and put our two screws back down. And then we can very carefully try to plug this back into its position and lock that tab down. Now we should be able to put the triggers back in. Folding it back around like this, it should click into place. And then we can take our two gold Phillips screws and screw them in diagonal from each other. And of course, don't forget the little one down here. Now let's reinstall our batteries. I'm gonna stick it down like that so the wire comes out the hole. It's really hard to get a good angle of this, but this only goes in one way, and when it's fully seated, it'll look like this. Then we can go ahead and close that book back up. There is a tab up here, so it slots in, and then you can just click it all back down. Now it's time to plug the battery in for the right Joy-Con. Again, having the wires come out of that slot. I'm actually gonna pull the rumble motor out so I can get in there easier. So now I can just line it all up with my fingers. Then we can go ahead and stick the rumble motor back down and make sure that IR sensor isn't knocked out of place. And once again, close it up like a book and everything should click into place. We can swap back to the tri-wing and again, those last four screws on each side. Whew. And we have now successfully replaced the Joy-Con sticks. Let's go make sure they're working though. Kind of slippery, I'm not gonna lie. Go to your system settings, controllers and sensors. We're gonna calibrate the control sticks. And this is definitely not centered. This one is better, but it's still not good. I'd like it to be accurate since these are supposed to be better in every way. To me, the best way to prevent any controller issues is to treat your controllers with respect. Don't eat while you game, try dusting around your gaming setup a little more often, and try taking some deep breaths before you put your controller in a death grip, even though that guy was definitely hacking. You, you get the point. And if you absolutely have to eat while you game, at least invest in a napkin. So what do you guys think? Is it worth upgrading to these? I don't think so. I really only think you should go for these if you're replacing broken joysticks and you're okay with using stick grips. Even the grips are kind of slippery. I'll have the whole set including the tools and the stick grips linked down below. But there's really no need if your controllers are already working just fine. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later guys. Like accuracy drops in demagn de demagnetization. 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 Demagnet demagnetization. 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 Magnetize. It's just the magnet. Magnetize. Demagnetization. 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 Can I just say it one time, please? Can I just say it one time? Like accuracy drops in demagnetization. I did it. That was good.